Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at these 1792 special releases. Now, of course, all these spawn from the original 1792 Ridgemont Reserve bourbon coming to us from the Barton Distillery there in Bardstown, Kentucky. Now, the original, I've been a big fan of for a very long time, uh, simply because it is a high quality bourbon for a very low price. Um, now, we're not talking on the level of the BTAC or anything like that, but good value for the money, okay? $25 for 750 milliliters, ridiculous. All right, but thing to note, that's a ride recipe mash bill for a bourbon, okay? So ride bourbon. This was the original release in 2014. They kind of shook it up going with a weeder bourbon. Now the weeder style, of course, big fan of that. Of course, Pappy Van Winkle's a weeder bourbon. You got the Wellers, all that. Uh, Larson, he's another one. So they introduced their weeder. Now the Sweet Wheat, great name. We're gonna see if it holds up, if it's really that sweet. Uh, but they all share one characteristic and that is their maturation length. All of them roughly around eight years old. Sweet wheat, eight years old, bottled at 91.2 proof. Not super high, but hey, 91.2 is not bad. They followed that with the port finish. Now the port finish spent six years in traditional uh, charred American oak barrels, followed by two years in port wine casks. It's bottled at 88.9, so a little dip there, 91.2, 88.9. And then we jumped up to a 98.6 proof single barrel version. Now these are the better barrels of the 1792 Ridgemont Reserve that they save to bottle specifically for this. They dump the barrel, they bring it down to 98.6 and then they bottle it. And then they bring in another barrel, dump it, do the same thing, bottle it. So they're all the same 98.6 proof. Full proof, you think that means barrel proof. It doesn't quite mean barrel proof, it means full entry proof. What that means is when they originally put the spirit into the barrel, it was 125 proof. They let it mature for eight years. They blend these barrels together. Who knows what the proof was, 130, 140, who knows? But they brought it down to the original entry proof of 125 before bottling. So that's what we have here. Still, 125 is no joke, so we're gonna go ahead and review that last. All right, on to the nose, Sweet Wheat Original, released 2014. It's got a nice sweet nose, car um, caramel, vanilla, Traditional red fruits being cherry and raspberry coming out. Cinnamon clove as well. It's pretty straightforward for a weeder. A little bit of that doughiness, a little bit of that yeast uh, roll coming through on the back end. A little bit of um, leather as well on the nose. Pretty straightforward, really nice. All right, port finish. Okay, here we go. This one's a little sweeter. This is actually sweeter on the nose than the sweet wheat. And it's that fortified wine. Because we're getting the... The first thing that hits me is the port coming through on the nose. So you've got those... Almost like... Uh, you've got the, the cherries, the raspberries, but they're joined with a little bit of a grape or a black currant. Matter of fact, I think I'm leaning more towards black currant here. Cinnamon clove. A little bit of vanilla, a good oak resin kind of on the back end, not over oaked, it's just joining in with all those unique characters up front. Single barrel. Oh, that's nice. That's a good straightforward bourbon right there. Kind of reminds me of some of the better store picks of the Ridgemont Reserve 1792 that I've had. Thing to note, now we'll tell you this little liquor hound tip. Kind of be careful on those store picks. Only buy one bottle at first because I've had some store picks that are great and some store picks that I just don't care for. And I think the reason is, of course, the store is making the pick. So if the guy making the, the selection, he gets sent these samples and he tries the three or four samples that they send him and he picks the one he likes, it may not necessarily be the one that you enjoy. Uh, I've had some that have a very strong artificial cherry kind of aspect to the flavor. I do not care for that. When it gets that, it's, I start thinking cough syrup and I just can't handle it. Um, but luckily here, it's almost like the better store pick is what I'm finding here. So on the nose, caramel, vanilla, it's definitely sweeter style, almost buttery, butterscotch I'd say. The red fruits from this guy are kind of still flowing through the, that raspberry cherry aspect. Cinnamon clove, 
a little bit of dried orange peel. There is a floral note, a little bit of a, I almost could just call it a honey, like a wildflower honey. So it's gonna give you a little bit of that floral essence, but that honey sweetness on the nose. Cinnamon clove is still in there. Nice good oak coming through. Again, it's rich oak. It's not over oaked or heavy oak. It's just good rich oak balanced in with everybody else. Very, very nice there. All right, foolproof, 125. Oof, a lot more brown sugar here. A lot more caramel here. Cinnamon clove as well. I would say a hint of dried orange peels. Very nice. Um, it's very dense on the back end, on the nose. So you get that, all those fruits, all that cinnamon, the, almost like a red rope, the vanilla, it's like a, with those fruits and the vanilla, it's like red rope licorice. Almost a little, almost a little cigar box in there as well. Very nice. Okay, on to the tasting. We'll start with sweet wheat. Medium viscosity. No, nothing above that. Yeah, maybe even a, maybe just a smidge below medium viscosity. It's not super oily. Caramel, brown sugar, vanilla, cinnamon, a little bit of clove, but mostly the cinnamon right here in the mid palate. On the back end, that's where I actually start feeling in the wheat element. And it is, it's a little bit of that doughiness of that wheat. The oak is joining in really nice. It is pretty big on the oak here. Matter of fact, it is getting a little dry on the back end. Overall, start to finish, pretty nice. But I think the, the better part of this bourbon kind of happens at the mid palate to almost towards the finish. But on that finish, it gets a little bitter almost like a, a bitter chocolate uh, on the back end and it starts drying out. It feels a little tannic on the back end. It's not sweet. So if you're thinking that's gonna be like a really sweet bourbon, no, don't, don't believe that. Um, it's got a little bit of a nice, a little bit of a sweetness to it overall, uh, but that drying element is just kind of a little bit of a negative for me. Of course, again, everybody's different, but that's just my note on it. All right, on to the port finish. Let me get a little cleansing. All right. All right, this has the viscosity. This is a good medium. Oh, it's juicy. And what I mean by that is, whereas this one was kind of drying out on the back end, this one's very fruity up front and it kind of stays juicy, fruity all the way throughout. And it's that, again, that fortified wine port is just kind of making a big difference here. It does have a little bit of that molasses even on the flavor. The caramel um, and the molasses. Wow, and right away it is black currant. Um, black currant in there with that cherry and that raspberry element dried orange peels as well cinnamon not so much clove almost i would call this one um is that what that is anise a little bit of that star anise kind of coming through as well not a whole lot just a smidge right there in that mid palate mixed in with those dried orange peels the clove and that cinnamon but on the back end, that's where the oak kind of comes in, oak resin, I would call it. And it kind of joins everybody up front. But man, it is it really is juicy all the way through. Very, very nice. It's still going. And it's not drying. Mm, good stuff there. Okay, single barrel. Mm, nice. Good medium viscosity. Just above, again, medium viscosity. And just like we know with that wildflower honey, it kind of does have that floral honey sweetness. It is. It's like really rich caramel, but it's that butterscotch. 
caramel butterscotch brown sugar and that leads you into those it's kind of joined up with those red fruits that you find raspberries cherries again cinnamon clove a little of that orange peel but that honey that wildflower honey in there is making it very very floral and unique right there in the mid palate leading us back into the back end where you're starting to get that little bit of leather again the rich oak mm. and that bump and proof kind of because again this is 98.6 kind of makes everything kind of just last a little bit longer oh man very very nice it's almost that, that butterscotch is just candied but it just gets very deep very rich and very round bourbon very nice right there good value for the money there now we're going to try the foolproof almost has like a little bit of a roasted nut character but it's it's not overly like that it's definitely on the sweeter side honeyed side mm, good all right foolproof 125 Wow. Yeah, that's dense. Again, very similar to here, but bigger, bolder, deeper caramel, deeper brown sugar, cinnamon spice. Let me hit that one. Let's see one more time. It does. It grows with intensity right down the mid palate. Cinnamon clove just growing. Roll all those flavors kind of rolling over the vanilla, the caramel, the, the brown sugar, the cinnamon, the clove, even dried orange peels in this one as well. Um, and then you start rolling over in the back end and we're getting a uh, cigar box that like we smelt it. You can now start to taste the tobacco leaf as well. Le old leather, a little bit of old leather element. Wow, that's really nice. I've yet to have a store pick that nice. The only thing that's kind of weird, and we're going to find out right now, about the original 1792 is it does not like water. But we're going to do it anyway and see what happens. And I found that out at the distillery, talking to some of the distillery uh, people there. And they all kind of, well, the one I talked to kind of told me, don't add water to this bourbon. He said, because for whatever reason, it just does not react well. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, try it. So he gave me a glass. I added some water. Got a little bitter little sour and it never really recovered from that and it was really strange because most bourbons when you add water give them a few minutes five minutes ten minutes and they kind of recover that one never really seemed to recover so ever since then i've known just 1792 i just don't add water to but this one's foolproof so 125 we kind of need to see what's going to happen and hopefully it doesn't do that let's see on the nose pretty similar just the cinnamon dropped out which is good because that was a little big all right Hmm, let's kind of, let me see that. It's, it's not bad. That one's, it, the, the fruit soured just a little bit, but not horrible. It kind of gave a little twang to the tongue for a split second. But it kind of recovers pretty fast and you're back onto the track with the, the original flavors, the cinnamon, the clove, all that. Orange peels. The leather, the, the uh, cigar, kind of um, tobacco leaf, all that's there on the back end. Overall, very nicely done. I don't think the water's hurting it as nearly as much as that one did. Of course, I haven't tried any new stuff, so maybe the water trick was... Maybe that was then, maybe they've changed a few things, I don't know. But this one seemed to get a little sour, but it recovered. So, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody have a great evening, and cheers.